Hello, everybody. And thank you for coming to this Acting for Video Games panel, which is a partnership between the Casting Society of America's Artist Development Committee and the SAG-AFTRA Foundation's The Business Program. I'm Lisa Zambetti. I'm a casting director for TV, film, and video games, and I'm the co-chair of the Artist Development Committee, along with the beautiful Jason Kennedy. Uh, Jason is here. He's going to be monitoring the chat in case you want to pop in any questions. Uh, our committee creates free educational opportunities for actors to learn about all kinds of different aspects of our industry from casting professionals, as well as other artists. And before I introduce our panel, please know that the sag After Foundation is a nonprofit organization that relies entirely on donations to provide emergency assistance and free educational programs to sag After artists. And this conversation tonight is made possible thanks to the generosity of supporters. And over the past year, the foundation has given over $6.5 million dollars in COVID relief to over 7,000 performers. So if you're a sag after artist and you need help, please ask. And if you can help, please give. Information can be found in the description of this video and thank you so much for your support. Okay, let's get into it. So uh, about eight years ago, I got my first job uh, casting for a video game called Battlefield 4 with casting director Emily Schweber. And I was so confused because I'd never played a video game. And from what I could tell, um, you know, the, just the animated characters, they hop around, they climb over walls, they shoot things. You know, I really didn't understand what acting had to do with it. And I wasn't clear on what we were auditioning people for. But I soon learned that there is a whole world inside the games. It's a world of cinematic scenes, of breathtaking storylines, amazing characters that requires actors and an ensemble cast to be filmed, very much like a movie. And even though Emily and I did find tons of extraordinary actors for the game, I learned that many performers and their reps don't really know about this opportunity. You know, maybe they think only voiceover artists or stunt performers do video games. And it's because of that gap in understanding that some reps don't submit their clients for these fantastic projects. And hopefully after tonight, that will change. Um, on our panel tonight, there are some extraordinary video game artists. Some of their work you just saw in the trailer we played at the top, um, edited by my 16 year old son. Thank you, Aiden. Um, and if you missed the trailer, those uh, full clips of those scenes can be clicked on in the show notes of this rep recording. Okay, so to our panel. First up is Tom Keegan. He is one of the world's top performance directors for video games. His work includes major franchises like Battlefield, Star Wars, Wolfenstein, Call of Duty, Need for Speed, The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners. Hi, Tom. Hi. Hi, Lisa. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Thanks for being here. Okay, and next we have casting director Carla Hool. Carla is an award-winning casting director born in Mexico City. She's been working in the entertainment industry for over 17 years. Credits include the films Man on Fire, Apocalypto, and Coco, and the TV series Narcos Mexico, Selena the Series, and Los Espookis. She also casts the video game Far Cry 6, starring Giancarlo Esposito. Hi, Carla. Hi. Welcome. Thank you for having me. All right, next, Millie Tom. Millie is a Toronto-based casting director in film, TV, video games, and audiobooks. TV shows include Kim's Convenience, Blue's Clues and You, and Degrassi, The Next Generation. She was also on the casting team for films The Incredible Hulk and Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. Her video game credits inc include Far Cry 5 and the Assassin's Creed franchise. Welcome, Millie. Thank you. Thanks very much. And we also have some extraordinary actors joining us tonight. First up, Elizabeth Grujan, whose TV credits include Lucifer, Grey's Anatomy, Scandal, and Criminal Minds. And Elizabeth is probably best known for her role as the second sister in the hit game Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, where she got to check off two major items of her bucket list. She got to join the Star Wars canon, and she has her very own action figure. Yay! Elizabeth, hold up the action figure. Oh. <laughs> it's right here. It's true. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Thank you for having me. Okay, and next is 
actor Karen David. She began her career in London's West End and in the original cast of Mamma Mia. And on TV, she's currently the series regular Grace on AMC's Fear the Walking Dead. She's been a series regular on ABC's Gallivant. She's currently recurring on HBO's Barry and CW's Legacies. And, and she's recurred on so many other shows, The Rookie, Once Upon a Time, and Criminal Minds. She's done video games such as Mirror's Edge, Dead Rising 4, and Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Hello, darling. Hello. So happy to be here with you guys. Thanks for having me. Okay, um, did Noshir, did Noshir make it? I don't know if he made it, if he did, I don't see him, but um, so I'm just gonna move on to the wonderful actor, Christopher Michael Watson. His TV credits include Scorpion, Kevin Hart's Guide to Black History on Netflix, Henry Danger on Nickelodeon and Seal Team. His video game work includes Resident Evil 2 and 3 and The Walking Dead, Saints and Sinners. Welcome um, everybody. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. If no sure, if no sheer shows up, you know, let me know so I can introduce him. But let's just jump right in. Um, Tom, I'm going to start with you. Okay. you. Ready? Yes, I'm ready. OK, so it, can you explain why you need experienced theatrical actors for video games, not only stunt performers, not only voiceover artists? Mm -hmm. And what are the roles, diversity of roles in these video game storylines? Well, first of all, there is quite a variety of kinds of roles. Um, there are purely voiceover roles, quite a few in most games. But um, what I've been specializing in is performance capture, right, which is simultaneously capturing the voice, the face and the body. And um, it is a movement oriented medium. It's not so much of a face medium of the, the, the subtlety. Uh, uh, it's really, it's, it's told through the body and the voice and face adds to it, but, um, it, it is a very kinetic medium. And so people really who have some kind of experience in theater or have physical training do very well. Also vocally, you know, the rooms are huge. They're the size of a football field. Um, you have to have a really solid voice. Sometimes you're under fire, you're in battle, you're in motion, um, so there, there are quite a few demands and also mentally it can be very challenging. I just was working on something last week where it's very complex. You have a very short scene and then you do something called moving hold, which is you have some kind of gestures, you look around and then at a certain point you meld back in, but depending on what the character does, you do something else. There could be various different things that just happened before. So mentally, we need, you know, very, very flexible actors as well. I mean, and, and, and any actors, uh, you know, jump in. I know, Chris, we worked in Resident Evil. Uh, you had a lot of scenes being on, you know, in a moving hold, moving, idling, right? And then people Absolutely. coming in. Yeah. yeah, I think uh, a lot of people don't uh, are not aware of how much physicality goes into storytelling, um, especially with uh, video games and how a silhouette can really tell a story or get across a certain point. Um, and so that's something I really learned working with Tom, uh, especially he was very clear on saying, OK, this is the story. This is what the audience needs to expect and to know. And how can we clearly tell this to them? And so, as you said, because you have such a short time to do certain things. Yeah, and Elizabeth, as you know, you had battles. You had many battles. There's battles. You might have a battle. You might have to blend in with a stunt performer who could be working right next to you, right? Um, you, 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 you have to be able to track the storyline and emotionally be very present in all of these scenes. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, um, it's an interesting kind of challenge, but I, I really love it. Like working with stunt people who are right next to you and kind of realizing what you as the actor can bring to fill in a moment and then what them as the stunt person can do all these incredible physical things that I could never do in a million years. And so how you can kind of fuse your gifts to kind of amalgamize and create this moment, I think is one of the unique kind of pleasures of mocap work. Yeah. And Karen, you know that, um, you know, like in Dead Rising, right, you have so many endings. There's, there, there's like maybe five different endings. Um, you have to track the story also, or depending on side quests that you do. So there's a lot of concentration and focus. Oh yes, it's very humbling. <laughs> I, I felt like I was back doing live theater 
and it was so exhilarating. You're so it, it calls for you to be to be very present and in the moment and uh, and constantly like all five senses, like everything you're you're aware of everything around you. Um, yes, and plus you're I, in a suit, right? You're in this kind of cat suit. You have a you, you have a huge piece of apparatus on your head. You 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 have markers taped to your fingers. Um, you you know there's, there's quite a lot of equipment that you're yeah. carrying as well. Sometimes the hardware definitely can um, impede uh, the performance, but uh, we try our best to get around that. Yeah. Can one of you just jump in and define for our viewers what's the difference between mocap, pcap, and likeness capture? Mocap is really when you're just doing movement, motion capture. Hey, hey, no sheer. Uh, Noshir and I were just on the same set and Noshir had more to do because he was performing, um, right? Noshir, maybe you can say a little about the difference between mocap and pcap. Uh, sure, happy to. Um, motion capture or uh, what's sometimes referred to as action capture is usually when the performer is wearing the suit and a tracking cap, usually a soft cap. So um, that's capturing kinetic motion without any um, any face capture involved. Sometimes they'll rig us up with uh, mics if they want to still have reference audio or something like that. Or if you're playing a creature or something where your face capture wouldn't be useful, then sometimes you'll use uh, pure mocap or action cap. Um, that's also usually where you see most of the stunt work happening in monster creature work, stuff like that. Um, and then full performance capture means that you're wearing the HMC, which is the helmet mounted camera. So you've got a helmet on with this camera on these two arms extending out and a little bit of light in your face and then mics attached to the rig. So they're recording your facial expressions, your voice and your motion all at the same time. You're basically 100% uh, digitized as an avatar, so to speak. So, I mean, I know that a lot of people are thinking, oh, my God, that sounds so technical. Uh, and, and it is once you, you know, get on set. But the but Millie and Carla, could you just talk about the auditions that you did for your games? And, you know, what are you looking for in the actors when you auditioned your stuff? Um this is the, the, this is just to say the, the first and only video game I've done, uh, Far Cry Six. Um, but the difference I found it interesting because I found like the performance was somewhere in between theater performance and film. It's somewhere in between because it, it's not as big as theater, but it's not as small as film. Um, and it was really interesting for me because before I had done you know voiceover, this was this was performance capture. So it, they, actors had to move more. They couldn't be static in the audition, which is usually what, what we ask for when we're auditioning for film or TV. It's more like stay in your spot, you know, don't be moving. For this, there, there had to be more movement. Uh, the voice, like Tom was saying, was also very important and expressions, facial expressions were very important, which which was, uh, you know, the that was the difference when it comes to to the acting style. Yeah. And that your game in particular, Carla, and, and if you watch the trailer at the beginning of this presentation, that was the scene between the young boy and Giancarlo Esposito. I mean, those scenes are incredibly emotional and powerful. So, uh, so do you want to, did he audition or did you offer him that part? Uh, it was an offer for him. It was an offer. But that, that boy that played, was that a real child that played that little boy? Uh, yes. Yes. Um, and yeah, I mean, we had all these factors and, and they, it was very, I haven't seen the game and I don't play video games. I mean, I think the last games I played was back in the day when Mario Bros. and those, I mean, long time ago. So, um, but right now looking at that, when, when you put it, it was like, it, it's amazing. It's almost like, um, it's almost real. Yeah, and but, that's only but their emotions. But yeah, you're right. Their emotions. I mean, everything is is comes through. It's uh, pretty yeah. amazing. Millie, you want to chime in? Yeah, I think uh, for me, when I first started, uh, I started with the Splinter Cell Blacklist, and my director was very. He had he'd stressed performance. He wanted performers. Um, 
And so I knew nothing about video games. I knew nothing about the medium. Uh, Ubisoft had just come to Canada or had just come to uh, Ontario, our province. And um, so he just said, don't worry about the technical stuff. We're going to work on perform. We're going to focus on performance first. So he, we sort of walked together and we grew together uh, with the first game. And um, again, I really went, I sort of looked at it from a film and television perspective point of view and I was like I do you know we're going to do it like close-ups we're going to do face it's going to be shoulders up um and then and that's so our first round of auditions were very much sort of uh drama cinematic driven and then the callbacks were then let's widen out let's see how they run let's see how they jump and we actually gave them sort of a little bit of a an obstacle course within our audition room to 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 maneuver for, uh, for the second and third rounds. And what are some of, there are some do's and don'ts though when you're auditioning for a game and also, I guess when you're also on set that I noticed, um, you know, when I'm working with Tom. Um, Tom, do you wanna talk about some of those or, or Millie and Carla, anything that you notice that are not good things for actors to do or good things for them to do in their, their auditions? Well, one thing is, you know, I'm, everybody does auditions differently. Like, um, Normally I start out with a character walk. And so I hope that the person has done some preparation first of all. And sometimes people just make fun of that or they don't know what a character walk is. Um, they haven't done a character walk maybe since <laughs> acting school. And um, and I have to explain, you know, take this seriously because or they joke around, they go like, ha ha, I can walk. It's like, you know, a lot of people in a video game, a lot of different teams are looking at and evaluating your work for the casting. And they have to check off the animation team, the face team, is there enough movement in their face? The voice team, right? There's different people. And so the animation team is looking literally, it's not like, you know, are you overweight or are you whatever, you know, or you have a pimple that day. It's more like, can they hang the character when they call it the rig? They call it the, your body is like the rig. Can they hang? They, can they hang this costume of a character on your body? And also, is there, you know, if, if you're supposed to be a soldier running and, you know, you you have a very... Sometimes I'll have people improvise, like like with a weapon, like they're under fire or with a, a lightsaber. You know, it's not like they have to be an expert, but it's like they have to look like they really know how to handle this thing, <laughs> you know, <laughs> in some way. So, you know, it's like don't underestimate that movement part. Mm -hmm. For sure, you know it's 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 so very important. But we've um, I mean, and we've auditioned characters that are, are not at all military grade roles. Yeah, I mean, yeah. there can be a bartender. There's all different kinds of DJ, yeah, all kinds yeah. Of things, but and just incorporating your body, incorporating movement is so fun. But you can't put your hands in pockets, right? When you're auditioning, that's not a good thing. Well, usually for mocap, you know, crossed arms, putting, you wouldn't have pockets. A lot of people, you, you wouldn't realize how many people use their hair as a character thing, you know, like how they kind of, you know, or, um, you know, their, or, or their face. And it's like, you can't touch your face. First of all, once you have the face cam on, you cannot put your, <laughs> Elizabeth's laughing, Garen's not right. Anybody who's not, they're laughing, it's like, cut, oh, you, what? I, I, oh, you touch your face. As soon as your hand goes between the camera and your, the little camera in front of your face, bad take. Uh, you can't touch your hair. You can't have anything with cloth that moves, so you can't shuffle your clothes. So really, if you strip away some of that stuff, you really have to find something deeper, you know? Um, you you know, it, the, the gestures and things have to really come from some some internal choices that you're making about the material. Right. But any, the actors like to chime in on, um, you know, any of the roles that you played that were particularly difficult, either emotionally difficult, technically difficult, you know, and what was that transition going from, a lot of you have done TV mediums, you know, transitioning to playing those roles uh, on this huge black box set, as, as Tom was saying. I, I was spoiled rotten right from the beginning because my first job was with Tom. And, um, sorry Tom, you're going to turn really red. <laughs> I know everyone on this panel will agree that um, Tom is this really inspiring supernova of a director and uh, his his extensive theatrical background makes such a huge difference um, 
and uh, just taking that approach, like Tom was saying initially with, with the walking and the movement, um, he's so patient because I was so wet behind the ears, but he focused initially everything about the performance um, and bringing the best out of you. Uh, so Tom, thank you. <laughs> I quickly learned um, what the tea <laughs> everything was very quickly. <laughs> I was like, what's that? Okay, I'll just do what everyone else is doing. But, <laughs> but it was, um, it's very much tapping into your inner child. And um, because you are, I mean, you have this enormous space uh, to fill. Um, and you're working together as a team with your other castmates, and uh, and it's 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 using your imagination and really fully like I felt like I was a little girl again um, playing make believe, you know. And when we, you know, they mark everything. It's it it is very technical, and I'm so not not tech savvy, but they mark it out so clearly where it you don't feel quite overwhelmed so that it takes away from your performance you know because initially i was nervous about it coming in thinking oh i've got this checklist to to tick off but i think coming from you know tom's background with with theatrically especially and trying to find that happy medium of of bringing the intimacy in some of these um moments you know that was a challenge because like carla was saying um it is like theater, but it's very much like film. And it's trying to find that happy medium, that 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 dance, you know, in between, especially when you're doing scenes that are quite intimate um, and emotional. Uh, but, you know, when you have someone like like Tom, and I know you guys will all agree, <laughs> and working with other, you know, with, with seasoned um, actors, it, it everyone just works to have the, together so cohesively. You know, one thing that's sometimes challenging for people who haven't done theater is that, especially with the technology right now, you have to do the scene from beginning to end like a play, like a scene in a play and everybody has to be good, right? And you have to know your lines. There's no cuts because there's too many different data sets to make a cut that they would have to stitch together. So they really try to minimize cutting scenes. Um, and so you, you, you know, you you have to you really have to know your lines. You have to know the pace. You have to be on it inside of the equipment as well. And, um, you know, that that can be, you know, sure, in rehearsal, maybe. Yeah. And, you know, it's like we'll have one day of rehearsal for two days of shooting. But in that one day, we have to become like a West End or Broadway level show in that one day. And then the next day, if you haven't done performance capture in this head thing they keep adjusting it it gets tight on your head you're you know it's <laughs> especially when you're in an ensemble if you're working with like more than like four people um you have to really be in sync with each other uh and and be on top of your lines and just <laughs> oh my God, we were working on the scene today and with no sheer and it was like there were what like six people in this scene oh. and it's like every single person has to be good and they have to get along and they have to know their lines and they have to and at some point I sort of we were talking about a blocking thing I said to the, no sheer and the people I was like you know what you guys just like improvise something you know just improvise a conversation so that this thing kind of flows because you're doing a lot there was a lot of uh, information that had to be conveyed but it has to feel like a group of people who've worked together for a long time right no sheer yeah that's right I got yelled at a lot <laughs> <laughs> I will say one Actually, oh, sorry. Can I say one other thing that Please. I thought? So, um, uh, I think another thing that's really interesting about uh, performance capture specifically is because this is a technology where the cameras literally surround the room. Um, it's important that every camera be able to reach every sensor if at all possible. So, things like walls, doors, they're all either make believe or kind of done with like a strip of tape or a piece of you know line going across the room so for actors especially who've done a lot of black box theater and are used to the idea of having to create worlds in their mind that aren't actually there um that skill becomes really important because like in um in red dead if uh charles smith was like you know s sneaking around in a camp i can't i can't be up against the border of of a wall which isn't there and like look through it. You know what I mean? Because that wall, as far as Charles Smith is concerned, is is solid. So I have to be really aware of where my spaces are and and build that geometry as realistically as I can for myself. And that's a that's a really 
wonderful and fulfilling part of what we get to do because your imagination is kind of clocked at 11 all the time. Um, and it's certainly a, I think for a lot of folks, especially if you haven't done theater, it can be a bit of a learning curve because on TV sets, usually you've got a, a full set you're working with for the most part, you know, and it, it's definitely um, an interesting challenge, but you get used to it really quickly. Uh, I just want to throw to Jason, my wonderful coach chair. Any um, questions up there? I know uh, time is flying, but did oh, you yes. have? Wow, it is flying. Yes, they are rolling in. We've got some great questions that have been coming up. Um, you know, there's quite a few, uh, quite a few questions about how to uh, how to be submitted when your theatrical agent won't submit you. Um, what can, can they do uh, when their voiceover agent does, uh, submits, but a theatrical agent doesn't? Um, any advice there? Yeah, Millie and Carla, who did you pull from for your games? Did you just put it out on breakdown and, or did you contact the voiceover departments or who did, what was your resource? Go ahead. So, oh yeah. So for me, it was uh, pretty much everywhere. We just went everywhere. Like, again, it really depends on sort of what you're looking for, but ultimately um, I started with the film and television theater agents and move towards the voice agents um, if we were stuck for something very specific. But yeah, absolutely, the on-camera. And we just released it on a breakdown and then again, go into the community um, for Assassin's Creed, uh, the, no, for Far Cry 5. It, it was, it took place in Greece. So again, we did open calls into the Greek community and sort of pulled. So again, those were people that didn't have experience, but again, we use that pool for either for voice or for, uh, for, for motion capture. I mean, me, me, me too. Same thing. I, I used a breakdown, um, as usual, uh, did voiceover, uh, agencies as well. And because it was also specific, you know, I was looking for Latinx actors and, they needed certain specific things. I even opened it up to uh, actress access just in case there was someone out there. So, yeah. so the message is tell your reps to submit you. They, you know, they may, again, like I said at the top, they may not realize what the medium is. If they haven't, you know, played a game, they've probably never seen a cut scene, which is what those scenes are called. They don't really know, you know, what powerful roles there are. Jay? Yeah, tell them that you uh, attended this amazing panel and learned so much about video games and uh, and that you want to start being submitted. Um, we do have lots of questions about training, how to get started in the field. Are there certain skills that can be learned, any places you can go to learn about uh, mocap in, in particular? There are a few um, comments with some suggestions from, from some actors as well. Anything you guys want to add to that? Any training spots that you would recommend or special skills? Sounds like theater movement classes could be super helpful, improv classes, but what other things do you think? Or places? I think it depends on what you want to do, you know? Like there's some people that just really love stunts and they really love, uh, you know, there's several schools, um, you know, where you get more of that stunt creature uh, weapons handling, certainly weapons handling, unfortunately, um, you know, is a skill that is in a lot of stories, right? Even in, even for film and TV, right? It's a good thing to have in some way because you play a cop, you play, you know, somebody's soldier. Um, definitely, you know, to me, it, it always comes down to the acting first. Um, but voice is very important also in mm -hmm. video games. A lot of times people are being really evaluated. They get a strong uh, casting ranking based on their voice, much even much more than their look for sure is vocally. So vocal training, very important vocal flexibility, um, you know, movement flexibility, uh, you know, it's it's the full package. Uh, it really is. Uh, but to me, it always comes down to the acting, number one. Um, you know, there were some questions about where are most video games uh, shot, where are they filmed, um, where does the actor need to be in that in that area in order to be considered? 
Millie, Carla, Tom? Sometimes they shoot abroad. Sometimes they shoot in LA, um, right? Some parts of one, you know, some scenes or Nishia, has anybody ever traveled? Any of the actors ever traveled anywhere to shoot anything? I've had, uh, yeah, I've had actors travel to shoot. Um, I don't know how they're doing it now. Um, Tom would probably. Yeah, do people are traveling. People are traveling. Um, it's, it's opening up now, but I mean, just like, you know, in production, people have been going to Eastern Europe and stuff for, you know, we have super COVID protocols, the same ones. We get tested every 48 hours. You know, we may wear masks on the set. I wear a mask all day, but I just take them off when they're recording a take. Uh, we do social distancing. Um, we eat outside, you know, we're very careful. Um, LA, quite a few shoots. Um, Bay Area, uh, London, quite a few shoot in London. Sweden is a hotbed of uh, video game production. I brought actors to all those places. Um, yeah, so, Montreal. Yeah. Montreal is a big, right? Yeah. Uh, Montreal is a big, a, a lot of games are shot in Montreal, quite a few. Vancouver also. I, I brought people, uh, Karen, Karen and I went to Vancouver on a game. Um, yeah, so, yeah. And I sh we should mention that these are all SAG after a contract. Yeah, they're, they're yes. some, I think it's the interactive. That was my next question, yes. What, so, uh, great, so, um, so video games for the most part are under sag after um, What is the compensation like? How does it compare to television and film? Are there residuals? Yes, uh, no, yes, yes, and no. <laughs> <laughs> it is a buyout. Okay. Um, yes, there there aren't residuals. Um, the scale is pretty good, though. It's nine. What is it? Nine twenty-five now, something okay. like that. But it's usually um, double. Usually the uh, we usually I, the ones I've worked on I pay double scale and for yeah. performance capture for sure. Mm -hmm. um, generally, we pay more than scale. And the nice thing about it, too, that I discovered when I started doing this coming from more TV is that it's a lot of work. Whereas if you book a guest star on a show or even recurring, maybe you'll do three weeks. But if you book one of these, you might work for a year on and mm -hmm. off. You know, it, it, it can be. So that's kind of nice as an actor. You get, oh, OK, I'm going to be working for a little while, you know. Yeah. Also, the days are very. I mean, at least at least on mine, the days are very. Uh, you know, easy. You know, you come in at eight. You come in at nine. You're done by five or six, right? It's it's nine hours max. I we hardly ever go over time. Um, the, um, the I think one of the things for the actor that uh, that's great about video games is the fan base is huge. I don't know. Uh, Elizabeth, Chris, maybe you can talk. Chris, you you gotten in a huge fan base, uh, haven't you? From some of your uh, re through Resident Evil, mostly. Yeah, there is a, there are some some great fans there, and I'm a gamer myself, so it was pretty easy for me to fall into the the streaming and just connecting with the fan base. And they're they're just really um, they're really invested in this. And uh, coming as a fan of stuff myself, uh, you know, these things are, are, are near and dear to them since childhood. And so I, I take that very personally and very seriously. You know, I, uh, I always try to uh, make sure that they feel heard and know that, you know, we couldn't do what we do without them, truly. So uh, they're a huge component of this. And they follow you to the other things you do, right? So Absolutely, you're yeah. In a movie very, or very loyal, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, Jason, anything else we should? Well, I think before we say goodbye, we, I would love to get some parting words from our esteemed panelists. Uh, if there's anyone who wants to chime in first and any words of advice or encouragement for our actors? Um, yeah, I mean, I would like to say something. I would like to say, you know, this is something I guess actors, like you were saying, and agents don't really consider because when you even me, when they called me about a video game, I thought I was just doing voiceover. I didn't know that it was, you know, it was this whole thing. So I think it's important for, the, I think there's going to be more. It's kind of, you know, the future in a way. So actors should consider, you know, looking more into this. That's what I would say. And, and I will say just to demystify some of the things about the acting 
it's it's acting as tom has really um has has stressed um the more you study your craft the more you you learn just about theatrical acting and film acting take classes everywhere that you can i think just continuing to build your toolbox in general uh, can only help you and uh yeah imagination is very much needed in this in this arena and uh so continue to uh, flex that muscle as well i think also from a from an artistic point of view I think video games is one of the only performance mediums besides like maybe some forms of immersive theater where your audience can be directly impacted by your performance. You know, your, your performance can literally change the choices a player makes in game. Um, and that ability to actually influence other people in such a powerful way, um, I think is an incredibly fulfilling part of the art form. Uh, I don't know another like TV and film and plays haven't done that for me in this way. It's, it's in a really, it's a really amazing thing. That's kind of specific to video games. And I would say just about, you know, going back to Tom talking about um, how there's so many aspects of training that are so important, but especially with vocal energy and keeping up your vocal stamina, because even though you know you start in the morning, you finish at about six o'clock, sometimes you're gonna be doing some shouting scenes and that requires a lot of vocal energy. And, you, and then all of a sudden later on, you're doing something that requires less of it, but you need to take care of your voice um, and, and doing vocal exercises as if you were singing. Uh, I know that's helped me so much, so I could be screaming my head off in the morning, but I won't have vocal fatigue. Um, later in the afternoon because I'm doing my exercises. So that's really, really important um, because don't underestimate the power of your beautiful voices and what you're going to be bringing. You're breathing life into those characters that you're playing and that vocal energy you're bringing. So do take really good care of your voice. Elizabeth? Yeah, um, I just thank you all so much for everybody for, for tuning in and, and also for having us. And it's been an incredible pleasure to connect with, with all of these wonderful actors and casting directors. Um, and for, for, you know, for me, everything in my life kind of shifted when I went deeper within as to like, why do I want to do these things? Why do I want to get the big job and be on the big billboard and whatever? And, um, and, and then kind of like coming into some alignment with that really, really helped me a lot. And, and also on set for these jobs, because like, as we've all been talking about, there's a lot of kind of unique challenges, like the suit and the head mounted camera and the light and the people and the, and you've got your lines and you've got your thing. And then Tom asks you to just surrender and give a performance and trust him and step into the unknown. And it's like, I found that as I went deeper into you know, what do I bring to this really? <laughs> like, not just like I'm competing out for a part, but like, this is my spirit, it's my voice, it's my energy. And Tom is so big on that. It really helped me to kind of show up on set really in a spirit of just service. Just how am I going to serve this thing? Not ego, not like, look at how great of an actor I am. Like, this is my big chance. I got to make a really interesting choice and I got to make a really interesting walk. No, I just got to show up and serve this, these people who you guys right now or whatever that moment is. So I don't know if that resonates with anybody, but thank you. Absolutely. Millie? Um, I think just to elaborate on what Elizabeth said, I, you know, it's interesting. I have never played a video game. I knew nothing about it and sort of came into this world. And um, I was lucky because I was... Uh, taken under someone much like Tom, who just a really great director who came from a cinematic background. And we both agreed, like we both sort of went in and agreed that we were going to tell stories, just tell the story. And we didn't even know what the end story, what the end of the story was, because again, everything was so top secret and the scripts were still being developed and they still didn't know exactly what the characters were going to look like in their heads. But what was interesting about it was I always thought, um, it's what the performer brings to a character. And it was fascinating to watch Tom uh, direct these scenes and just go, yeah, like I never really, you know, again, you, it's what Elizabeth and Karen brought to these characters, even though these characters have already been 
put to the screen and you go, that's, and, and so I love when an actor is grounded or when an actor can just come in and go, I'm just going to throw caution to the wind and I'm going to create something. And, you know, maybe I get it, maybe I don't, but be, make really interesting, bold choices and, and don't be afraid. Like, I think the one thing we fall in love with performers is we love their fearlessness and we love how they make it seem effortless and they just seem to just ease in to this character. And I think the same goes for, especially this medium um because again you're creating it with this team as you go sort of every day you're sort of discovering something and i think that's really important for performers tom yeah you know um i actually lead at the beginning of every rehearsal and every performance day i lead a sound and movement warm-up that also is about presence and it makes a big difference because um you know, you are, you have to bring the breath. You know, I always say this thing about like, you know, you go in to do mocap and um, you get into this kind of, you know, leotard colored suit with colored patches. Your lovely face is turned into a dot matrix. Your beautiful hair is pinned up and put under kind of an ugly cap with a thing around it. And um, you better have something going on inside. You have your voice, your breath, your movement. That's that's what you have to pull on. And I think, you know, warming up, working your instrument every day, that's an actor's practice. In terms of the casting side, I just say, you know, there's room for everybody. I mean, I, on, on the, the first uh, of, the, of the Wolfensteins, I had to cast 80-year-old Polish-speaking grandparents. And I looked everywhere. And finally, I found this Polish theater company in New York. And I cast, I brought these people to LA and they were, they were wonderful and so delighted to be working on this kind of fresh new medium. And it's stuff like that, that is really great. You just never know, you know, you just never know. And um, I always say to actors, it's like you audition, the competition is fierce for sure. But if you're good, just stay in the game and have a landing pad, have a website, have your contact info. And, you know, do you need a reel? You don't need a reel, but sometimes, you know, I'll, somebody will audition, I think, well, they could be good for another thing. Let me look, let me look and see if what I can find about them online, right? I'm looking for info, I can't find anything. You know, people kind of give up or, you know, just on IMDb, have your, have some kind of contact, something where I can find you maybe, you, I remember people years later and I've searched for them to find them and bring them in, right? And so, you just never know, you know, um, stay in the game, keep working. It's, yes. it's a wonderful thing. And uh, an, an actor said this to me recently, and I, I, I thought it was so beautiful. He said, I told a friend, man, if you want to do the great roles, if you want to do interesting roles, you're not going to get them in TV and movies. You're going to be a waiter. You're going to be, you know, a golfer. You're going to be something in games that's where you're going to get these roles that's where you're going to get these amazing stories very far out stuff i mean really where are you going to have to do a vomit laugh i mean <laughs> <laughs> come on in a game <laughs> yeah just uh, the last comment i will make is yes diversity there is such diversity you guys out there i can see some of the questions you know every age in these storylines kids older folks every shape of actor every ethnicity every gender we have i've worked on you know non-binary characters uh, every orientation it is all out there for you so um get out there get submitted and let's do some video games together yes Hey, thank you. Thank you. Yep, Jay, you want to thank take you to our amazing and beautiful Inside and Out moderator Lisa Zambetti and our amazing panel. Thank you so much, everybody. Tom, Carla, Millie, Karen, Elizabeth, Christopher, Nashir, uh, and of course uh, the SAG After Foundation for putting this together with the Casting Society of America. Um, thank you so much, everybody. This has been just wonderful. All right, thank you guys.